We are talking about arc length here as our next application for integration. Um, so to do that, we need an arc. So let's see, here is an arc. And arc length is you imagining you're an ant and you're crawling along that line and you're keeping track with your uh, fit or bracelet or whatever it is you're using to record exactly how long you go along that line or if it's a string and you pull it out straight and measure it along a ruler or whatever. So arc length is, as the name suggests, the length of an arc. So if we give it an axis here, help conceptualize what's going on, it's pretty straightforward. You can imagine you can get a rough approximation by just going straight across like that. We could say this is from A to B right there. Uh, or we could break it down and go straight across to there and straight across to there and add that up. Better still, we could go like this and then from there across to there and from there across to there and down. And this is what calculus is wicked awesome at, breaking things down and getting closer and closer and closer to the truth. So if we were just to imagine maybe this change here, because that's pretty close to being straight, uh, we could get a very good estimate of what that is by simply thinking how far over are we going in the x amount and how far are we going up in the y amount. There's our delta x, there's our delta y. And by just using good old Pythagoras, we could say, well, delta x squared plus the delta y squared, when I square rooterize that, that is going to give me a line that's really close to that curve. And by going smaller and smaller and smaller, you can see how we will get very, very close. And if we go infinitely small, we will get infinitely close. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this basically from A to B, and uh, we will come up with that arc length. All right. So in the simplest form, and this is really just a uh, kind of a way of conceptualizing and remembering this formula. It's one of the easier ones to remember because it's, as I said, simply Pythagoras put into action. Um, but this is not a rigorous proof, uh, but it will help you sort of remember the formula and picture what's going on, okay? So we can use arc length um, with parametric equations uh, very simply and with uh, regular functions. Uh, so I have an example for each one of these. Um, first one is a parametric. So if we think that the x variable is being controlled by t squared plus 2 and the y variable is controlled by 2 thirds t cubed. I've put it into a calculator here so we can see the picture. Oh, and let's, um, let's say this is going from t is from 0 to 5. That's not a very good 0. Um, if we do that, when we plug in 0, we'll get the coordinates 2. And when I plug in 0 there, 0, that's pretty straightforward, up to then plug in 5, and that's going to be 27. And when I plug in 5, that's 125 doubled, is 250 divided by 3, 83 and a third, I believe. So starting here, going there, let's look at it on a calculator uh, graph. So uh, it's relatively straight, so we could just get a really good approximation by making a straight line, doing some Pythagoras, getting a sense as to what that is. From 2 to 27, that's 25. From 0 to 83, that's 83 and a third. And then if I were to square both of those and take the square root, um, uh, we'll do that in a second. But that is going to give us a really good idea. Of course, it's going to be really close to the high 80s just because that won't change it much. Anyway, going back to our uh, arc length procedure with integrals, what I'm going to do is then integrate from 0 to 5. That's our boundaries. And it's going to be then the square root of, well, how much is this changing? It's just going to be the derivative dx with regard to t squared plus then dy with regard to t. And I'm going to square that. And then the variable I'm using is time. So what is that? Well, the derivative here with respect to t, that is just 2t, and then I'm squaring that. And what is the derivative here? Bring the 3 out front. It's then 2t squared, but then that's squared. Again, think Pythagoras, and then I square root that. 
So what is that integral? Well, that's going to be the integral from 0 to 5. Uh, that's 4t squared. And that will be 4t to the 4th. And then that's dt. Well, uh, what do I do here? It's tough to take the square roots of things that are being added, so you really hope that something magical can happen. And in this case, it's not too bad. I'll write it over here. 0 to 5. And what I can do is take out 4t squared. And when I factor that out, it can come out front, right? So when I factor out the 4t squared and take the square root of it, it's 2t on the outside. And what's left behind is 1 plus and when I factor that out, I just get t squared, dt, All right? Well, this is the type of thing that we're pretty good at integrating. It's uh, going to be that we can take and substitute, and we've got a bit of the derivative of our substitution here on the outside. So it's just u substitution, 1 plus t squared, du is equal to 2t dt, which is exactly what I've got there, so that's awfully convenient. 0 and whoa is it 0? No it's not because when I make a substitution here for 0 that's 1 and then it's going up to 27 nope 26 and it is then the square root of u du since my 2t goes 2d dt goes right there and then that gives me uh, 3 halves u to the 3 halves evaluated from 1 to 26, okay? So if, um, if I evaluate that then, I am going to be able to pull out that, two th that 3 halves. Uh, whoa, that's not, that is 2 thirds when I integrate. Wow, I wrote that wrong. Okay, got to watch yourself. How did I know? Because I just thought about pulling that out, multiplying, and getting to cancel. So catching your errors is an important thing to do. Um, so I can then factor that out. It's 2 thirds and then 26 to the 3 halves power minus uh, 1 to the 3 halves is just 1, okay? Uh, if you put that into calculator, what is that going to be? 2 divided by 3 times then in parentheses 26 raised to the 1.5 minus 1, close parentheses, hit enter. That is approximately 87.716. If we go back to this and do uh, 25 squared plus uh, 83.3 squared, and then square root that, I get approximately 87. So that is a confidence check that should give you reason to believe that you're doing the right thing. All right? So then our next one, and I got about three minutes of time, I think, to do this, is one which is not in parametric form. Uh, this one, I think I can graph this quickly. Change mode. Down to function mode, I type this one in. Our window, uh, we are not going up that high. We're going up to about 6. And I think that is about right. Let's see if we can get this. All right, here is our graph of this function. And we're going from 0 to 3. I think that's about 3 out there. So we can see that it is uh, a curve that should be manageable. Uh, to do this, uh, integration now. We think about it a little bit differently. If we go back to our original idea of the delta x's squared plus the delta y's squared as being our length when we integrate, if we were to divide through, um, multiply, uh, or divide through by um, 1 over x squared, this will transform to be the integral that is 1 plus then delta y squared over delta x squared. All right? So this is now the formula that we're going to use. And this is really the derivative then of this 
equation here. So what I need to do is take my original function and then find, I haven't, I've written it rather awkwardly, but y prime is then equal to, when I take the derivative of this, bring that out front, the threes cancel, I get one half, and then x squared plus two, chain rule, bring this down to one half, then take the derivative of the inside, simple chain rule problem, and I get this, well, this is simply two x cancels with the one half, I get one half, and then radical x squared plus two. All right, so that is my y prime. And that's going to go into my integral here, where I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3. And it's the square root, then, of 1 squared is 1, plus then x radical x squared plus 2 squared, and then dx. OK? so. It's just 1 plus the derivative of your function squared, all under the radical, and then we integrate. So these problems often wind up being very, very difficult, and that's where we'll use our numerical approximation techniques or computer. This happens to be a problem that is worked out so that it, it really works out nicely. So you kind of get an eye for these, that a lot of them are to the 3 halves power, because when you take the derivative, it goes to the 1 half power. And when you square 1 half power, it kind of cancels. So you'll see a lot of example problems like this in the homework. OK, well, what is this? Well, I'm going to write it over here from 0 to 3, square root of 1 plus. Well, when I square this, I get x squared. When I square the radical, it goes away. So it's just the parentheses, x squared plus 2. OK? And when I um, dx. So if I multiply this in, right, I then get the integral from 0 to 3, square root of 1 plus x to the fourth plus 2x squared. OK? Well, wouldn't it be great if we could take the square root of this? You're thinking to yourself, and maybe you've noticed, but if I put this 1 at the end, I then get x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. So that is the same thing as the integral of, and then I'm going to write first what that is when it factors into the perfect square. That is x squared plus 1. If you're not sure, foil this out, and you'll see that you'll get exactly this. Well, I'm taking the square root of that, so when I square root that, it goes away, and I get this. Okay, So hope that magic happens when you have a problem like this, and often it's contrived so that it does, even though it's a bit unusual in the real world of math. So now what happens? Well, I can integrate that. That then is 1 third x to the third plus x. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 3. So we're in the home stretch here. That's just going to give me, uh, when I plug in 3, it'll be 27. So that's just 9 plus 3, and then minus 0. OK, so I get 12. Nice little answer for our arc length there. OK, good luck on the rest of these.